Good day, students. Uh, welcome to third term. Uh, by the grace of God, we'll be starting with the topic. It's titled uh, Citizenship. Uh, before then, let me quickly greet you. I wish you well. And I do hope you are having the best of time at home at this moment. And at the same time, observing all the necessary rules given by government. Wash your hands. At the same time, to use your hand sanitizer and uh, observe every other rule given by government. Most importantly to us is your learning. Please read your books. Now to the topic, citizenship. Before now, you remember that uh, we're trying to look into citizenship in civic education. But this time around, we are trying to look at citizenship in government as a topic. And in this topic, we'll be looking at some basic areas in citizenship. We want to know what actually is citizenship and at the same time methods of acquiring citizenship we we'll also look at the rights duties and obligations of a citizen and at the same time too you should be able at the end of the day to differentiate between what actually is uh, a citizen and who is a non-citizen at the same time so these are some of the issues we'll be treating basically now to the topic. The issue is every individual, irrespective of your age, has certain rights and privileges they enjoy as much as they are human beings. And don't remember, don't forget, I told you in the, the last class that uh, you talk about uh, individuals. You are talking about every man, irrespective of their age, their race, their status such person has some basic rights and privileges because they are human beings but in the case of citizenship countries to countries have some basic things you must respect to become a citizen of such a country now what we mean by citizenship in this context is just the status of being a citizen of a particular country. The status of being a citizen of a particular country. So citizenship is a status of being a citizen of a particular country along with the rights, duties, obligations of being a citizen. Now, who is a citizen? And that's the question we we'll ask ourselves. Who actually is a citizen? Now, who is a citizen? Any talk, can you please try? Who is a citizen? Yes. A citizen is a legal member. Don't forget I underline the word legal member here. Legal member. When you say legal member, you are talking about that particular person is recognized by the laws of that land. That person has fulfilled some basic constitutional requirements. And that is the meaning of legal member. So, a legal member of a state with full constitutional or legal rights in the country where he or she resides, that makes the person a citizen. As much as he enjoys some basic rights too, which is the responsibility of the state to protect, such a person also has some duties and obligations to the state. So, it's a two-way traffic. Rights that government must give to you, that government must try to protect as long as you remain a citizen, and at the same time, your duties and responsibilities, duties and obligations that you have to give a return to your state. That makes you a citizen of that particular country. Now you ask a question. Then we have talked about the status of being a citizen is citizenship, and a citizen is a legal member of a particular country or state. Now the question will now be, how do I become a citizen of a country? Or what are the ways of acquiring citizenship? That status of being a citizen. What are those ways of acquiring it? Number one is what we call by birth. 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 By birth. By birth. Now, a person is a citizen of a particular country if either is of appearance 
either mother or father is a citizen of that particular country. For example, any Tom is a Nigerian. Uh, Ebuka is a Nigerian. Why? Mr. Ebuka, Ebuka's father, Mrs. Ebuka, Ebuka's mother, from a uh, data state in Nigeria, father from Abia state in Nigeria. So they are both of Nigerian nationality. Then Ebuka by birth is a Nigerian. Is that okay? So some other states like the uh, University of America also recognizes the fact that if you are born in a particular state, a place of birth also determines your citizenship status. For example, if you are born in America, your parents took you there, they are not from America, and you were born in America, automatically you become a citizen of America. So by birth in this context, you see that your parents are from that particular country, and that gives you the citizenship status of that particular country, or in some countries where they recognize birth, place of birth, then automatically you become the citizen of that particular country. Another thing is naturalization. Naturalization. What do I call it? Naturalization. When you talk about naturalization in this context, you are talking about somebody who has stayed in a particular country for a number of period. For example, in Nigeria, you will have stayed in Nigeria for 15 years before you can go and apply for citizenship. And then you must fulfill some certain obligations, some certain uh, qualifications, you must have it. And which include, one, you must be somebody who has uh, very good qualities in terms of uh, behaviors. You must be somebody who, who has never been convicted by a law court. These are some of the other areas. So, naturalization in this context now means you have fulfilled some levels, you have stayed in that country for a period of time, and then you have fulfilled some basic constitutional requirements. It varies from country to country, but there's a universal one. The issue of you must not be an ex-convict. You must not be somebody who is given to illegal behavior or immoralities before you can be recognized. And you are staying in that country for a period of time. Like I did mention, in Nigeria, you have been in Nigeria for 15 years. Then you can naturalize to be a citizen of Nigeria. Another thing is the issue of registration and marriage. Registration and marriage. Uh, let me give you this uh, very good example. Abiola, Abiola, your friend, is a Nigerian. And we have uh, another person from the United States of America who comes around to be a student in Mavis Academy. And uh, at the end of the academic year, or perhaps secondary school, they got admitted to the university. They still meet each other at the university level. And at the end of the academic work in the university, they got married. Abiola, a Nigerian. The other person, an American, they got married. Abiola automatically, by marriage, becomes a citizen of what? Of America. And that's what we call citizenship by registration or marriage. Is that okay? Now, another one is honorary. And I'm very sure our students are brilliant students. Uh, at the end of the, your academic year, you're going to excel in various uh, areas of calling your profession. Some of you will be very good lawyers, some of you will be very good uh, journalists, and you are doing well in your profession. Nations of the world are just invite you and honor you with their citizenship. That's honorary citizenship. And that's why you see Professor Wallace Winka today, who uh, is highly cerebral professor, is a citizen of uh, South Africa, is also a citizen of America, by being followed as a citizen. That's honorary citizenship. Is that taken? So now we move to the next one, and we'll talk about uh, the rights of a citizen. You know, I said at the beginning that there are some basic rights you enjoy for being a citizen of a particular country, and such rights are not negotiable. It is the responsibility of the state, I mean the country now, to make sure that those rights are highly protected. And number one is the right to life. The right to life. Security and at the same time protection. 
It is a duty of the state to make sure that your right to life is highly protected. How do I mean? When you say right to life, yeah, you are talking about your ability to live without being killed, being more than unnecessary. And don't forget, I gave you an example where we're treating the fundamental human rights. I said that two brothers, I gave a scenario, two brothers were involved in festivals, they fought, and at the end of the day, one kills the other. And the father says, no, 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 they are my children, please allow them to go, home. we'll settle the matter at home. Since one is dead, we can bury the other one. No! It is not the responsibility of the parents to protect the right of the one that is dead. It is the responsibility of the state. And that's why the state will make sure that the other person pays for his action. And that is why that person has his right to life must be protected. The sanctity of life of human beings cannot be compromised. And that's what that particular one means. And at the same time, we have the freedom and protection from slavery. You can't just pick anybody and take him to somewhere and make him a maid. You know, as long as they remain the citizen of a particular country, you cannot take somebody like me. Now, you can't take me from here and take me to a white one to be a maid in the family. No. It is the duty of the state to make sure that I'm kept and the dignity of human life is protected. And that's what we mean by. And at the same time, too, you have the right to vote and be voted for in an election. The right to vote and be voted for in an election. That's what we call the political right. Every citizen, as long as you fulfill some conditionalities, and which number one is you must be of a certain age. In Nigeria, for example, you must be 18 years and above before you are qualified to vote. So you have that age. You can vote and you can also contest for election. They won't ask you a question, why are you contesting? As long as you are a member of a political party and you win the primary of that political party, you can contest for an election. So it's your right to vote and be voted for. And at the same time, you have the freedom of movement without restriction. You can move to any part of Nigeria. It's your right. As long as you're a citizen of Nigeria, you can move from one area to another without being restricted. And uh, you will see some things as we move on. And at the same time, we have the freedom of expression. You have a right to talk, to say what is good anyway. We will get there. You know, you, you have a right to say whatever you want to say in respect of government, in respect of the people around you. You don't, you, you need not be, be guarded. Is that again? And at the same time, you also look at the right to ownership or property. You can have property anywhere you want to have it, as long as you can afford it. So these are part of the rights you need to enjoy. You know, I said the other time, it's a two-way traffic. One, your rights, and the duty of government to make sure that those rights are protected. You also, you have some duties and responsibilities to government and to your country. And this is what we call your duties and obligation as a citizen. And I think you mentioned one. Immediately, I know my students will know them. So, any talk, can you please tell me one? Payment of taxes, very, very important. It's an obligation. It is an obligation. It is something you must do so that government will have revenue to provide the social amenities. Can you mention some of the social amenities that you know? Power supply, running water, good roads, on and on like that. So, when you pay your tax, government have revenue to make sure that some of these things are provided to society. You must also obey the laws of the land. You must also obey the laws of the land. It's your duty as a citizen. Because when laws are obeyed, there will be peace in the society. There will be law and order. There will be crisis because people obey laws. And this law starts from as simple as traffic road laws, the rules and regulations guiding road users. Another thing is that voting during the election is your duty. Because it is through voting that the system will throw out credible leadership. When people don't vote, when everybody folds his arms and don't vote in an election, and then you notice that people who are not qualified to lead will be in position of leadership. And it's also your duty to also respect all the national symbols, our national currency. So unfortunately that you see some students holding money and just squeeze it and put somewhere. You know, 
you are trying to disrespect a national symbol. Your currency is a national symbol. You don't just squeeze money and put it anywhere. You know why you see people do that? They correct them. Hold the money well, get a pause, put it inside, keep it well. You also talk about the national anthem. You know, on the assembly ground, most of the time, they tell you to stand right. It's just a respect of that anthem, your national anthem. You also have some other symbols, the coat of arm, on and on like that. So you must it's your duty as a citizen of that country. And at the same time, you're in war. If your country is in a war situation, you must give yourself in to be conscripted into the military, the armed forces. You don't say, ah, you run away. No. It's a situation that demands the protection of a country. So you must give yourself in. And I said that you must be loyal to your country. You must not go down with other nations, as you are saying in America, for example, and you you have uh, snippers into an information that something is going to happen in Nigeria, and some people are coming to Nigeria to attack Nigeria. It is your responsibility to go to the embassy of Nigeria in America to give such information. That's loyalty to your country. Very, very important. As season, you must be loyal to your country. Now, let's quickly look at this uh, question. You notice that in the contemporary Nigeria and even worldwide, there's the issue of uh, COVID-19. And uh, the issue of lockdown everywhere means that movements are restricted. How can you explain this one in the face of uh, your fundamental rights as a citizen? The question is, the rights of a citizen is very important and cannot in any way be compromised by the government of any state. How can you explain the lockdown situation in Nigeria which is an infringement on the freedom of movement as guaranteed by the constitution. Please write down that question and make sure you put it in the comment section. We'll be discussing it. And at the same time, we'll also move to some of the limitations. Much as you have rights as a citizen, there are some limitations to these rights. You can't just say your rights are absolute. No, 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 they are not absolute. There are some limitations to this right. And number one is we'll be looking at slander and libel. Slander means you cannot just say anything because you have a right or freedom of speech or expression. You can't just say anything. You can't just call a person, for example, your colleague in class, you can't just call that person a bastard, an illegitimate child. That means you have a proof to who the father of that person is. And in the face of law, you must be able to prove it. That is slander. Slander is what you say negatively against a person. Why libel is what you put uh, down, you write down. For example, if you write something on the social media, you know it's common today where you see people writing so many things on the social media. Unsubstantiated facts, fake news, false information. You know, you can't say because you have freedom of expression, you just write down anything on the social media. Very, very important. You will be prosecuted. Another thing that can limit the right of a citizen is conviction. If a competent court of jurisdiction has convicted a person, that person cannot enjoy his freedom to stay outside or to contest for an election, for example. If a person has been convicted by a court, that person cannot contest for an election in Nigeria, for example. So that one is a limitation to your right as a citizen. Another thing is trespass. You cannot just intrude into the private ownership of a person without the consent of that person. For example, you can say in your class now, you have your own seat, and uh, Abiola has a seat somewhere here, Damola has his own seat, and because you have a freedom to move around in that class, you just go to Damola's seat, and Damola says, please stand up. You said, I have a freedom to move around in that class. No, that's trespass. You have just moved to where you do not have control over. So you cannot just move to another person's uh, uh, property without the consent of that person. That's trespass. So that can limit, can be a limitation like that to your freedom. Another thing is a matches a period. And I think that will give credence to the question I asked the other time about the emergency situation that Nigeria is facing at the moment. The issue of COVID-19. And government has to do something in market, Something very urgent to correct the situation. So the emergency period, government can declare coffee you and that can limit how you move about. Another thing is the issue of murder. I hope you are aware that if a man kills another person and is convicted in the law court, 
of murder, such a person will be killed too. So if you commit murder, you can't say, ah, the son, your, your life must be respected. The sanctity of life must be respected. I have a uh, uh, right to live or the right to life like that. You can't say that. Why? Because you have already committed murder. So that cannot stand the test of time. So uh, I think I will have to run off from here. But before I go, let me quickly tell you to look into this. In your own opinion, with all the discussions we have had, what can you see to be the differences between a citizen and a non-citizen? And then drop your comments in the comment box and then we'll be able to discuss it in the next class. Thank you and enjoy yourself.